Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Tom, the Radio Tom Fowl, and today we are going to be showing you everything you need to know to use Tabletopia. Now, first of all, what is Tabletopia? Tabletopia is a pseudo sandbox for board games. Uh, in it, uh, it is fully licensed uh, board games for you to be able to use. So unlike a traditional app, which would do all the scoring, certain animations, uh, a, lot of, a lot of bookkeeping done, this would be your equivalent of playing a board game in person, but utilizing an app. So you're going to be moving all the pieces. You're going to be doing the scoring, the rule keeping. That is going to be all on you. So now with that being said, you just go uh, into a browser, uh, either Chrome, Firefox, uh, your, your Mozilla, or the uh, Opera, Safari, what have you and head to tabletopia.com. You'll get to a page that looks something like this, except for over in the corner, you're gonna have login or sign up. You just sign up right there. Now, first, I do wanna talk about one thing. It's going to be a little bit explained a little better later on, but there is a subscription service to this. Now, as you can see here, this is our plan. I'm in free. I, uh, I utilize the free. Sometimes I will go into uh, the gold. We'll explain why here in a second. In this bronze free, uh, all you do, your, your email address, you put that in to, to log in. You can host up to two games at a time. You can have two rooms open. If you need to pause, come back to one later on or a little bit of a campaign game, you can leave that one open, start up another one. However, you cannot access the premium games. We'll show you those in a second. And obviously you couldn't have guests inside the premium games. Silver, you can have up to six games simultaneously as well as play the premium games but you can't invite guests uh, which would be someone without an account whatsoever that'd be uh, your guest um, into those premium games gold that opens up that restrictions you can have up to 10 games simultaneously the premium games and the guest in premium games and let's get into something that would have a little bit of premium content and it usually usually I'm gonna say this with a big usually shows this premium tag so this wingspan uh, European expansion has it. Um, I have that in my library. Now I do have some games purchased uh, through a application called Steam. Not gonna be delving into that one right now, but let's see. Okay, here's a, here's a prime example of a game that may not show the premium tag on it, but it does have some premium options. So there are in here your setups. So if you wanna play Scythe, a very popular game, you could play online with uh, two players. Uh, this Crimea versus Nordic setup that is in the game. But uh, let's see, there's languages. But if you want to do a standard two to five player, it's going to be under the premium customizable player boards inside the premium. So that is one consideration is sometimes it may not show the premium, but certain player count setups do have the premiums attached to it. That's uh, just a little bit of a heads up for you. So I'm going to go back into the playground here and we are going to find and select a game. Now I have uh, bookmarks, so you can uh, add, remove games from your bookmarks. Come down here to select through. So we've got like Paleo, Furnace, Night Cage, That Time You Killed Me. Some games I want to give a shot, some that are recorded right here on the channel. Uh, but for demonstration purposes, we are going to go into a game called The Loop. I'm not going to teach you how to play the game, but I'm going to show you some uh, neat tips and tricks. So we would select that more info brings you to this screen that we just saw over on Scythe. You, uh, this is a game that can be played solo. So if you click on play solo, it's going to take you straight into the game. Uh, no lobby, none of that. Play hot seat. So you can do up to uh, five players and depending on uh, how many people you have in the same room with you, that is what hot seat is, is if you were playing at your house, um, possibly if you had it on a tablet browser and you're passing it around or even on a computer, people hop into the seat, set up how many players that you want. You're going to be passing it back and forth or this play online option. Uh, you'll also be able to click on bring up the rules for a particular game here more information on games as they are put in if you have comments concerns 
pop them down right into their videos regarding it screenshots uh all right here as well even uh, a nice link to uh, like the the board game geek or even to uh and this one's by pandasaurus it will take you right to their website but let's show you how to uh start a room so we're gonna hit play online brings us to this page here if we want to play with someone else we will want to add a seat all we do is click on the add a seat and boom hi future editor tom here realizing a spot that i forgot to show you was if you needed to change the setup much like we uh, had in scythe where you could do the customizable player boards or the different player counts you're going to want to click right here so we're in a game uh, called burgle bros which has different setups so there's the office the uh, the bank job the fort knox job at different player counts uh as well as different setups you just to set that up you just click right here um yep and if you don't have the right thing for it it'll pop that up right away so i could do fort knox job and it is swapped over to that back to where i was red player is available it is vacant if we need to get rid of it go ahead and click right on that but if we want to invite somebody to our room we have this invite player option these are folks who are on our friends list if they're online right now or if say they don't have an account through tabletopia uh, and aren't online you can copy the url paste it and they can just come straight in that way or you can use this facebook share option uh, you can make this game visible to other players so inside this find and play if it's visible to others they'd be able to see that you can schedule the game for a certain time they can come in uh take their seats be ready that way and once again the rule book is down here you won't even need to pull that up right now and i will show you why here in a second so the other thing to keep in mind remember how i showed you can have up to two uh games open at a time this now shows open room so say we come out home here that's now showing our now playing that loop lobby is ready even if we had started the game I can back out it'll still be there ready to go uh let's go into furnace play online this now shows i have two open rooms if you want to close it from the outside you would go into this open rooms click on one of the closes you need to be able to do this before you open up another room uh from inside the game and we'll show you that here in a second uh how to close you can finish and close the game from right here uh say it doesn't start up work out you open up the wrong game close it from right here there are multiple multiple options but if you can ever start a, if you cannot start a game because you have too many rooms open just come right up here to this uh icon of the die it'll show how many rooms are open uh how many you you have uh open right now click on it i'll show you how many you're allowed to have and there you go so say we want to start the game when someone else takes a seat they will then uh, and you have everyone in you'll go into a ready up phase everyone clicks uh it'll be this instead of start it'll be ready and we'll uh continue we'll get into the game go through our little loading here and just takes a little bit of time take means openly place an object on the game surface we'll get into why that might be a good little tool tip here in just a second and there we go we are now inside of tabletopia to be able to do some basic things uh mouse uh very very helpful to move around i am using the left click uh holding while dragging around if i want to pivot and rotate i hold down right click pivot and rotate um there is an option for a video chat uh we'll we'll talk about that here in a second it is something that i don't personally use i use uh discord i use zoom google hangouts uh this is an option uh a, a paid service 499 us you can use it right inside a game i've not used it so i will not be getting into it uh so i'm gonna go ahead and click cancel uh but yeah we're, we're just gonna get you into the basics here of how to how to move around um few very very helpful things and if there's one thing you're going to want to take away from this if you ever get lost or you don't know how to do something if you take your cursor and you come down here to this corner so this shows me tom f uh it shows me online it shows if i have any cards in my hand but here we have three buttons we have volume 
we have rule book. So remember I said we could kind of skip pulling up the rule book if we wanted to. This will pull up the rule book. It's a little uh, little chugging uh, right now as it's loading in all of the images, um, which is great. M middle of a game, you can pull up the rule book. The only downside is if you're playing with more than one person, you don't, it's nice and it's not where you both have two separate instances of that rule book. So I can't just say, oh, hey, pull up the rule book and look right here. Uh, they, you would have to tell them, okay, go to page seven, look up top under action phase. So then they would have to scroll to it on their own. So that's a plus side and a an downside. Uh, but that is uh, the rule book. But the big feature is this question mark right here. This is the help summary. This shows every ne nearly every little tip and trick you're gonna want to know and in all honesty i have a image of it up on my other monitor right now so as i'm showing how to do different things this is uh I i'm using that to reference this just to be on the safe side so going back to the chat for a second the clicking on this little icon here will bring up the option of video chat, but for free, there is a text chat over in the corner. You can pull that up, type, hello, people. It'll send that through. There we go. And it'll give like a little hoof so people will know something was sent. Uh, that is that. So let's go into a few options up here in the corner. We have a full screen mode and I'm going to leave, uh, I'm started in full screen, uh, on a standard, uh, windows. It is F 11, or you can hit this up here. You can use escape to get out of it. I like F 11 myself. If you ever need to pause the game or if you are done with the game, there's this little ribbon up here. Takes you to the game menu. This lets you pause finish uh that way you can score the game i think this one has a victory defeat or just kicks you out sometimes it'll give you an option to uh push in scores but seeing we accidentally just finished the game let's go ahead and restart it this will take us all the way back to square one and the good news is we hadn't changed a whole ton but sometimes you can put in scores you can put in if you won if you lost this is it, it's all dependent on the developer of the game this isn't one of those we can do that you can restart close the room send feedback or head back out to the lobby utilizing this uh this banner here on the side now another little uh thing we have here is this turn-based modes right now this is a free-for-all so if we had another player in and you'd be able to see their cursor moving around uh, it'd be whatever player color they are we are all moving doing things simultaneously you can set this up to go turn-based clockwise turn-based strict turn-based flexible so now at the end of my turn or at the start it's going to say your turn and pop up when I'm done doing uh, my actions, I would click in turn, but seeing there are no other players inside of this game, I'm just uh, I'm just gonna go to a free for all because it doesn't uh, matter a ton. So let us show a few little nifty things. So here in this game is our little player section. We have our deck of cards. We have our player card, but God, that is a long ways away. I can use the scroll wheel to zoom in further if I want to, or two options. I can put my mouse over that and push Z and kind of get a little bit of a zoom in, but still, still hard to read. Or I can press the space key. Now you don't have to spread, uh, you don't have to uh, press and hold you just tap it and it'll give you this nice blown up view so you can read stuff. That is the space key. Very, very helpful on the camera controls. Now, a couple other ways to move the camera around besides what I showed you of the click and drag, you can use W a s and d w goes up a goes left s goes down d goes to the right then the uh, rotating of the camera is on the right click bring down now fun fun little nifty thing there are camera positions numbered one through nine so say we wanted to see our own player board here we are going to set this camera by holding down shift and pressing a number one through nine. I'm going to put this on camera one as camera one saved. Now, to be able to show you how this works a little bit better, let us show you camera two. I want a good bird's eye view of the board. So I'm going to do go right here, shift two, 
camera two shaved. Now let's go back to that first view. I'm just going to push the number one by itself. Takes us right to where we had it set up. And number two, nice bird's eye view of the board. You can set up nine of those. This is such a nifty trick. I'm a big fan of this one. Uh, very, very helpful. Uh, we showed you the Z, the camera views, uh, the object view with the space bar. Let us get into the objects themselves. We have a stack of cards right here. If you want to take a card, you can just hover over, click, drag, and you can take it. Now, currently every player can see that card, but say you want to put this into your hand where no one else can see it but you, you can take it, drag it down to the bottom of the screen, and you'll notice it has a little bit of a blue highlight on the bottom. I got a little, little blue glow, and that'll be per player color. That is now inside of my hand. No, no one else can see this, except for obviously all of you at home watching this video. If I want to take this out, I just pull it out, drop it down. If I want to say, pull it out and have it face down, the flip an object is F. So we'll flip it face down and drop it. I can flip the, this entire deck by hovering over and pressing F flips the whole deck of five cards. So let's put this back in our hand using a different uh, technique of hover over and press T. That will take it and put it into our hand. If we want to hide our hand, press H, H for hand, H for hand, T for take, yay. But one menu that I use absolutely the most is the context menu. Context menu is this right click menu. This will let you flip, lock, rotate uh, on the board. You can do, it depends on what you right click on. It is in the context of whatever you're cl clicking on. So rotate, flip, lock, yep, flip the board itself. I can hide the interface, help, camera view, set camera view, zoom, hide hand all inside of that you can you can set values um if there's a die or even this little randomizer over here we can set its value we'll get into that here a little bit more in a second uh but that is your context menu one of one of the most helpful things if you're not certain of something is just right click you got some options that is uh what you do for a deck of cards, this gets a little bit tricky because say I want to uh, put this back on this deck and it's not, it's not stacking with it. No, it doesn't, doesn't work quite work quite right. What you want to do is you want to click drag, hold this card over that until it turns orange. So you'll see how it turns orange. Now it'll snap onto the deck, be part of it. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and here, here's that context menu for a deck of cards where we can draw, we can deal, deal will uh, send that many cards to every player at the table, uh, rotate, flip, lock, locking just means we uh, cannot manipulate in certain ways, I think that doesn't work too well on decks of cards, or it'd be the bottom card, like, let's see, let's lock this into place, yeah, now, now I can't move it, decks, decks of cards are a little bit weird on the lock. Well, let's unlock it. Now we have our options to flip and do all that back. What if we want this uh, spiky fur on the bottom? We can hold this above and hold down the shift key. So if we need to put a card on the bottom of the deck, hold down the shift key, let it go orange, and you see that stack uh, with the arrow showing on the bottom. Now to prove that it went to the bottom, there's spiky fur on the bottom of the pile. Now we have all these cards and we want to put them all back into a deck. But I don't want to take this and do this one by one. There is a bounding box. Yes, it, it sounds sounds a little strange. But to do a uh, multiple select, go off to the side. Hold down your shift key. Left click and drag. And make this what is called a bounding box over this. You will now select all of these items. Another way you can do it if you don't like that is you can shift click. You'll see how they have a little bit of white border around the outside. If you need to diselect something, you can do it that way. But now you pick these up as a group. We'll hover over and it puts it right there. Say we want to shuffle this. We'll go into our context menu and shuffle. If we want to take, it'll pull one out. The other thing we can do if we want to take more than one thing, we can hover over it, use our middle mouse wheel and go until we hit the number we like click 
and it'll take that many that many off pretty uh pretty straightforward um once again flip is on f you can put stuff under other things so say i want this under that like so or i want this back under that use the u key for under now say you want to put something on top but you don't want to add it to the stack hold down control once you hold down control you will no longer add it on top no matter how hard you try now just be careful of don't hold control before you pick it up because doing that rotates the card another way of rotating cards in 90 degrees is using the q and e button and just spinning just spinning around it's kind of it's kind of fun uh but yeah that is uh that is very much the deck action as well as uh most every other object so in the loop here we uh we we need to flip these over at some point uh let's get to uh let's get to bags bags uh can store different components different things going on be able to grab something out of the bag click and drag put something back in you go over usually the bag kind of opens up num, 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 num. drop it right in and typically yep uh there is uh depending on how it's set up it can randomize that is all on the developer of the game to set up how the bags function and if there are special things this uh th this game in particular if you've ever played the loop has a uh, a cube tower like a dice tower you drop uh, cubes into that come out on the board this one because it doesn't quite work that way you do it a little bit differently so this says i uh, draw a cube from the purple bag place the red cube in the region matching the color of the cube you drew place cube you drew back in the bag repeat the steps so like this one so there's a yellow track a purple track a black track pull this out up oh, yellow we'll add a red cube here this goes back into the bag oh hey purple's out so we'll grab a red cube put it here i know it goes on these but just for demonstration we'll pull it out hey purple purple again so this every time you put it in randomizes now this here works like a counter so let's go into this context menu here or uh let's go into this uh help menu i should say this works as a counter so say uh this right up here that shows uh a nut like the number six this would be typically for victory points uh you can change that value by going up and down uh on the scroll wheel while hovered over it so this here uh instead of a number it rotates around the board which is kind of neat it has i believe seven different positions yep one one through seven so you can hover over it go up and down on the mouse wheel to move it you can right click into the context menu and pick position one through seven for a game like this you, you would have no idea where it goes you can randomize with r puts it puts it right over there which is uh also kind of neat um or you can hover over it and press space and however you leave it is however that is set and that is kind of your your basics on how to how to use tabletopia the games itself you're gonna have to learn um there are bit between the rule books uh the only other thing that we haven't shown you is a die on how to roll the die but i'll tell you something this right here does the same thing that a die does as you can set the value of a die like one one through six you can randomize it by hovering over it and pressing r uh if you have multiple dice remember that bounding box i showed you where you take this bounding box over then you'd press r that would uh, that would uh roll all the die at the same time uh the the term would be your I know it's roll, it'd be your randomize, but you would just hover over what you want to randomize, press R, or hover over what you want to roll and press roll. But in all honesty, that is that is what you need to know to get you going in Tabletopia. If you learned anything from this, context menu, uh, from the right click or this help, this help menu are your two greatest two greatest assets uh, by by far. Uh, use use and utilize those um 
but yeah, that is, uh, that's what you need to know to get going, get started inside of Tabletopia. Hey, if you want to see gameplay footage inside of Tabletopia, I have videos right here on the Radio Tom channel. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it to those who might need a little bit of help and love inside of Tabletopia. If I missed anything, let me know down in the comments below. This is probably a growing and changing platform. Things may change over time that may not be in this video. Uh, when that happens, I uh, once enough of them happen, I'll uh, I might make another video once we uh, once we get to that point. Uh, let's let's just move move some tokens and stuff around. Why? Because it's kind of it's kind of fun to do a little bit. We're messing around, but thank you so much for watching. And until next time, I've been the Radio Tom.